What's going on, guys? It's Greg here, aka NY Prepper. It is Friday, March 22nd, 2024, and I have an emergency alert to share with you guys. Right now, it is 1414 Eastern Time here in the United States, and we have some major breaking news coming in from Europe today. So, last night, Russia launched a massive missile attack on Ukraine involving over a hundred missiles, one of the largest missile attacks on Ukraine since the war started. And what's very disturbing about this missile attack last night is that Russia tried to blow up the Dnipro Dam, which is one of the largest dams in Ukraine. And what's even more disturbing is this dam is actually upstream from the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, which is the largest nuclear power plant in Europe. It has six nuclear reactors. And so the Russians launched multiple missiles at this dam. They actually hit the dam itself, and they also hit the hydroelectric power plant portion of the dam, and they destroyed that. So Ukraine can't use the dam anymore to generate electricity. Now, the dam is still intact. There hasn't been a break in the dam just yet, but they did hit the dam with multiple missiles, so it's still possible that the dam could fail if the dam sustained structural damage last night. It might take a couple of days for the dam to fail, or maybe after a big rainstorm when the water rises and there's more pressure on the dam, the dam could fail. And so this is extremely concerning. It's upstream from this massive nuclear power plant in Ukraine, okay? The largest nuclear power plant in Europe. So if that dam fails, that whole power plant is going to be flooded with, you know, millions of gallons of water. And obviously, we would have a massive meltdown on our hands. Now, also, one of the main power lines that connects that power plant the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant to the power grid was cut last night during this missile attack. And so now this massive nuclear power plant only has one power line connecting it to the power grid. And if that one power line fails for whatever reason, then the nuclear power plant is going to have to run on generators. Okay. So this is extremely concerning guys very very serious situation and it's very possible that russia could launch follow-up strikes tonight and they could try to finish that dam off so get prepared guys things are really gonna get crazy here in the coming weeks i am anticipating a massive russian offensive this spring and summer against ukraine and i think it's going to happen at the same time as Belarus attacks Lithuania and Poland, and at the same time as Serbia attacks Kosovo, and potentially at the same time as North Korea attacks South Korea. So we have a lot of stuff going on around the world. I'm telling you, this spring and this summer are going to be absolutely crazy. So make sure you have your nuclear war survival plans in place. Make sure you have a fallout shelter and make sure you have a bug out bag, okay? But this dam that they tried to hit, the Dnipro Dam, is 100 years old. It was first built in the late 20s. And then during World War II, Stalin actually blew the dam to slow down the advance of the Nazis when they were coming towards Russia. And then they rebuilt it after that, after the war ended. So this is a very old dam, guys. It's not a new dam. It's not built to withstand multiple missile strikes, okay? Even one missile strike is enough to cause a big crack in the dam and then cause the dam to fail, okay? All you need is one missile to create a crack, and then that crack will just get larger and larger over time as the water pressure, the weight of the water puts pressure on the dam. The crack will get larger and the dam will just break. Okay, and that could still happen. We'll have to see in the coming days and weeks. All right, especially as spring comes and the water rises and there's more pressure on that dam. 
And this is assuming that Russia doesn't try to finish off the dam with another strike tonight or this weekend. We currently have U.S. nuclear forces on high alert still this afternoon. And yesterday afternoon, we had six nuclear war command and control planes. And when I went live last night at eight o'clock, that was one of my main talking points in my live stream was that our nuclear forces were on high alert and I was warning people about it. That was actually the original title of my live stream was that U.S. nuclear forces were on high alert. And now we know why they were on high alert, because they knew that Russia was planning this massive strike. So they were getting ready for it. OK, they were scrambling our nuclear planes in the air, our nuclear warplanes to make sure that our nuclear forces are ready in case of an escalation. But this afternoon, we have three nuclear war command and control planes in the air. We also have a presidential doomsday plane in the air. And we also have a B-52 nuclear bomber in the air. OK, so it's possible that Russia may launch another strike tonight. We'll have to wait and see. But that nuclear power plant in Ukraine is only running off of one power line now. It's running off of its 330 kilovolt backup power line and that backup power line was just recently fixed okay they were trying to bring it back online uh the last like three months and this update was sponsored by my patriot supply guys my patriot supply has brought back their 25 percent discount on their three-month emergency food supply and to get the discount you got to use the link prepare with nyprepper.com and the link is in the description below this video. But this three-month emergency food supply has a 25-year shelf life. It includes over 2,000 calories per day. Breakfasts, lunches, dinners, drinks, and snacks all contained within six rugged water-resistant buckets. And free shipping is included. So use the link preparewithnyprepper.com to get $200 off or 25% off of the My Patriot Supply 3-month emergency food supply. The link is in the description below this video. Free shipping is included. They also have a general store where they sell all kinds of prepping and survival products and they're always running various discounts and to get to their general store you just got to click on the My Patriot Supply logo when you get to preparewithnyprepper.com at the top of the page, and you'll see their general store where they sell all kinds of prepping and survival products, and they're always running discounts here. So use the link preparewithnyprepper.com to get 25% off of the My Patriot Supply three month emergency food supply, and the link is in the description below this video. And so thank God that they fixed it before this strike, because if they didn't fix it, then there would be no connection to the power grid. And this power plant would have to run off of diesel generators. OK, it has six nuclear reactors. Do you know how much cooling is required to keep all that fuel, that nuclear fuel cool when you have six reactors? That is just insane, guys. Okay, backup generators are going to guzzle through fuel to keep a massive plant like that running its essential functions. Okay, so and plus it's a war zone. It's not going to be easy to refuel that power plant. Plus, Russia is in control of it. And we know anything Russia controls has a tendency of melting down. Okay, think about Chernobyl. All right. So this is a very serious situation, guys. OK, only one power line is connecting this nuclear power plant in Ukraine to the power grid. And it's a backup line. It's not meant for uh, long term use. It's only 330 kilovolts. OK, the primary lines are 750 kilovolts. It's a backup line. It's running off of one backup line. If this backup line goes down, that's it. We're running off of diesel fuel. OK. And then we have this dam, 100-year-old dam, just upstream of this nuclear power plant that got hit with multiple missiles last night, okay? So, you know, the potential for a catastrophic situation is very high right now, all right? And we also have Forte 15 in the Black Sea right now. This is an RQ-4 Global Hawk reconnaissance drone. And if you notice, 
It's actually doing these boomerang patterns here right across from the Kirch Bridge. So I personally believe that we're going to see some type of an attack here tonight by Ukraine. I think Ukraine is going to launch a retaliation strike on potentially the Kerch Bridge or nearby areas because you see here the boomerang pattern opposite of the Kerch Bridge. This RQ4 is keeping an eye on the Kerch Bridge, okay? And the reason why is it's getting detailed target information for the Ukrainians so they can launch strikes, okay? So we'll have to wait and see what happens tonight. If anything crazy happens, I will go live. But let me just show you guys what these nuclear warplanes are doing right now over the U.S. So we have one that went out into the Pacific and lost reception with the flight tracker. We have two of them over Oklahoma right now. One is looping over Norman, Oklahoma. One is looping over Elk City, Oklahoma. And when they do these loops like that, it means that they're actually communicating with our nuclear forces. They have a trailing wire antenna that they spool out the back of the plane. And when they loop, that trailing wire antenna goes vertical in the air, and then they start transmitting through VLF messages to our nuclear forces. Here we have a doomsday plane, and it actually had its transponder off for a while, and it just turned it on, and it is now looping over Lincoln, Nebraska. Okay, so our nuclear forces are on high alert this afternoon. We could see another Russian missile strike tonight. We could see a Ukrainian retaliation. We'll have to wait and see. But let me just show you on the map where this dam is located. So this is the city of Zaporizhia in central Ukraine. And this is the dam that was hit last night. Okay. And if you zoom out, you'll see that it's literally not even 30 miles upstream from the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, which is right here, okay? So if this dam were to break up here, it would flood this whole area, okay? This would be completely underwater, okay? This nuclear power plant with six nuclear reactors, okay? So very serious situation. I wanna just share some footage from this attack last night. So here we have footage uh, of the actual dam being hit by a cruise missile. Check this out. So there's the actual dam. This is someone looks like on the upstream side of the dam. So this is the back of the dam. And you can see the missile hit the top of the dam. Now, what's interesting is this cruise missile or whatever type of missile this is, it was actually deploying flares. You see that? Look at that. It was actually deploying flares, and that's to basically draw away any heat seeking anti-air missiles like stinger missiles you see that it deploys flares right there so i don't know what kind of missile this was if this was one of their cruise missiles i'm not sure but you can see it deploying these flares check that out that's pretty crazy i've never seen that before so um it's pretty advanced missile but look at the fireball it's a massive fireball guys so this came from the northern direction if it came from the upstream side it came from the northern side and then it dove down and hit the top of the dam look at that fireball guys i have no doubt that they were trying to destroy the entire dam they just didn't succeed so now russia if they want to they can launch more missiles and finish it off
the applaud. Absolutely insane, guys. Watch how it deploys the flares. Look at that, guys. That is just insane. I'm speechless. Here we have some pictures showing the aftermath. You can see the top of the dam here in flames and destroyed. Okay. And this is not a very heavy duty dam. Okay. This is an old dam. You can see right there a huge break in the top of the dam. This huge section of the top of the dam is missing there. You see that? Okay. That's very concerning. And think about the vibrations. When this missile hit the dam itself, the blast and the vibration, what kind of damage that would do to an old dam like this. Okay, here we have another picture of the dam. You can see the control building of the hydroelectric power plant is uh, on fire and smoking. And then you can see these big fires over here. Okay, so this is extremely concerning, guys. And here we have some old pictures from World War II. And this is when Stalin breached the dam. And here we have Nazi officers standing and watching because they can't go across it. And you can see all the water pouring in. But you can see this is not a very uh, wide dam. It's not very thick. Okay, it wouldn't take much for this dam to breach. Okay, here we have another picture from 1941. Okay, when Stalin blew this dam to slow down the Nazis. Here's another picture, an aerial picture, okay? So absolutely insane. And it appears that last night's strike on Ukraine targeted energy infrastructure across all of Ukraine. Kharkiv was hit by 15 to 20 missiles and is now completely without electricity. And Ukrainian air defense shot down 55 Shahed drones and 37 missiles. In total, Russia attacked Ukraine with 151 missiles. So out of 150 missiles, they shot down about 90 missiles. So about 75% of the missiles and drones that they were uh, launching to Ukraine got shot down by the Ukrainians. And here we have some video footage coming from the metro station in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. You can see people here hiding out in the train station, taking shelter. Okay, very sad situation. The Ukrainians are claiming they shot down 55 out of 63 Iranian drones, 35 out of 40 KH-101 cruise missiles, 2 out of 2 KH-59 guided air missiles, 0 out of 12 Iskander missiles, 0 out of 5 KH-22 missiles and 0 out of 7 Kinzel hypersonic missiles and 0 out of 22 S-300 missiles, okay? And the Ukrainian electrical power company DTEK confirmed severe damage to multiple power plants that it operates across Ukraine. So they targeted energy infrastructure last night across the entire country, guys, okay? And uh, multiple power plants were damaged, not just, you know, hydroelectric, but other types of power plants. And there's a total blackout in Kharkiv now. We're hearing of blackouts in Odessa, blackouts in Poltava. We're hearing that in the Lviv region, a drone hit an energy infrastructure facility. We're hearing that one person was wounded in Ivano Frankivsk, which is in the Ukrainian Carpathians. Apparently, infrastructure was damaged over there, too. And so the Russians hit basically every city in Ukraine, even these small places in the Ukrainian Carpathians. Okay. And also, there's blackouts reported in northern Ukraine in the Sumy region. There's a blackout in Krivi Ri, which is Zelensky's hometown. And what was interesting about this missile attack and what was different about it than other missile attacks in the past was that Russia first launched short-range ballistic missiles towards Zaporizhia and Kharkiv before the brunt of the missile attack from the air started. Okay, so it was pretty interesting. They launched a bunch of short-range ballistic missiles from Crimea to Zaporizhia and also from Russian territory into Kharkiv. And then like 30 minutes later, 
or even an hour later, all the air launched missiles started coming in and hitting various targets. So that was pretty interesting. And the Kremlin spokesperson, Dmitry Peskov, said that Russia is in a state of war, and everyone should understand this. We are at war. Yes, it began as a special military operation, but as soon as this group was formed there, when the collective West became a participant in this on the side of Ukraine, for us, it already became a war. I am convinced of this, and everyone must understand this for their own internal mobilization. According to Peskov, Russia cannot allow the existence on its borders of a state that has a documented intention to use any methods to take Crimea away from it. Okay, so very strong words from the spokesperson for the Kremlin, Dmitry Peskov, saying that Russia is in a state of war and that Russia went into a state of war since the West started helping Ukraine. And he also said, that Russia will not allow the existence on its borders of a country that has intentions to use any means necessary to take Crimea back. Okay, so he says, cannot allow the existence. So what does he mean? Does that mean that they don't want Ukraine to be a country at all anymore? Does it mean that they want to take over Ukraine entirely and change the government? That's what I think. That's what it sounds like to me. And if they can't do that, then they'll probably just nuke it, okay? And the French president, Emmanuel Macron, apparently said at the LSA palace in a closed meeting recently that Ukraine may soon collapse. And now we know why Macron is so paranoid about the situation in Ukraine. And he's talking about sending troops there. And the commander of the French army yesterday said that the French army is ready for any situation and that they're basically ready for war, is what he was saying. So, very serious situation, guys. Okay. And it's all going to pop off this spring and this summer. Russia is drafting hundreds of thousands of troops and they're going to send them to the front lines and the Ukrainian front lines could collapse because even best case scenario if today the US agreed to send Ukraine some equipment and ammunition it would still take months for Ukraine to receive it and so i think that we're going to see a massive escalation by Russia this year because Ukraine is vulnerable right now their front lines are collapsing and Russia has the momentum and they're going to take advantage of that, and they're going to try to make a breakthrough, and I think they're going to try to go for Odessa. I think they're going to try to go for the capital again, okay? So this is very, very serious, and they're going to try to do it before a potential change of presidents occurs in the U.S., okay? Putin said himself he prefers Biden because Biden is predictable, meaning he knows that Biden is weak and he's not going to do anything, okay? But if Trump gets elected, it puts some unpredictability and Putin is not 100% sure what Trump would do, okay? So the, the momentum is on the Russian side right now. They're going to take advantage of it, okay? And at the same time, Belarus is building up forces right on the border with Poland and Lithuania. Serbia is moving forces to the border of Kosovo. And the president of Serbia said that he's just waiting for the right opportunity to invade Kosovo a few days ago. And now there's troops on the border with Kosovo. So it could all happen at once, okay? Belarus attacks Lithuania and Poland. Russia makes their big push into Ukraine, breaks through the front lines, and then Serbia goes after Kosovo, okay? The Hungarian Prime Minister, Viktor Orban, said that the West will decide to send troops to Ukraine in two to three months. Wow. Okay, so Orban saying... NATO will be sending troops into Ukraine in just two to three months. And I personally agree because Russia is going to be sending a massive force into Ukraine with the goal of making a huge breakthrough. And I want to remind you guys that yesterday, Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu announced the creation of two new ground armies with 16 brigades and 14 divisions, okay? And many military experts are saying that that could amount to three quarters of a million troops, okay? 
two new ground armies, 16 brigades, 14 divisions, guys. That is insane. Okay, so that's what the Ukrainians are going to have to deal with now. And Russia has been on a wartime footing. Okay, they've been dedicating 30% of their GDP to defense spending. They've been cranking out artillery shells in their factories like crazy. So um, the West is, you know, dilly dallying while Russia is on a war footing. Okay, and the Financial Times is reporting that the White House has grown increasingly frustrated by brazen Ukrainian drone attacks that have struck oil refineries, terminals, depots, and storage facilities across Russia hurting its oil production capacity. The U.S. has urged Ukraine to halt attacks on Russia's energy infrastructure, warning senior SBU and GUR officials, those are the two Ukrainian intelligence agencies, that drone strikes risk driving up global oil prices and provoking retaliation. And China's special representative for Eurasian affairs, Li Hu, expressed China's support for an international peace conference involving Russia and Ukraine on equal terms. Li emphasized China's readiness to accept anything that aids de-escalation and negotiations. China has submitted proposals to ensure the success of the peace conference planned by Switzerland this summer. So very interesting. China wants peace in Ukraine. And the situation in Belgorod is continuing to escalate. The Russian rebels are continuing to shell the Russian military in Russia. And Russia has now completely leveled one of their own towns trying to exterminate these Russian rebels. And they've been unsuccessful at doing that. Here we have a picture coming out of Belgorod. And this was this morning. And here we have another picture Coming out of Belgorod, you can see this hole on the top of a apartment building here from an artillery shell. And it's very possible that Russia is doing this. I, I would highly doubt that the Russian partisans would just be randomly shelling buildings. It's very possible that the Russian military is doing this as a false flag to get Russians mad at Ukraine and the partisans and to give the Russian government a justification to escalate the use of force in Ukraine. Here we have some footage coming out of Belgorod this morning showing multiple cars on fire from uh, an artillery shell, it appears. Okay, so the situation is escalating in Belgorod. These Russian rebels are really causing a headache for Putin. Here we have a video coming out of Belgorod. Somebody's driving down the road and then an artillery shell goes off uh, basically like in front of their vehicle. Check that out. Okay, I mean, that is just crazy. So uh, I don't know if this was from the partisans. I don't know if this was from the Russian military trying to take out the partisans and, you know, they missed or something. But uh, this is pretty crazy, guys. And they completely leveled the entire village of Kazinka, which is right on the border uh, with Ukraine. Here we have some footage that was shared by Russian media, Zvizda News, and they're driving through Kozinka. And they're showing how the whole village is basically in rubble now, okay, from fighting with the partisans. And so my understanding is that this was caused by the Russian military. The Russian military was shelling their own village because the partisans were hiding out in these buildings here. And, and they were basically doing the same thing to Kazinka in their own country as they do to Ukrainian towns when the Ukrainian military hides out in these buildings. They just start shelling the crap out of these buildings. So this is absolutely insane, guys. This is in Russia, okay? So I think Putin is going to escalate his force very soon. I think right now things are calm somewhat, okay? We had that big strike last night and the dam got hit, but that's nothing, okay? I think uh, the main event is coming this spring and this summer. I think it's going to start as soon as next month. We're going to see this massive push by Russia in the eastern part of Ukraine. They're going to try to break through the lines there with those two new armies that they uh, put together. And Belarus has created a NOTAM for the southern part of their country along the border with Ukraine. And it's going to start on April the 1st and go all the way through June the 30th. 
Okay, and so why is that significant? Well, that means that this spring and early summer, we're going to see a lot of uh, missiles being launched from Belarus towards Ukraine. Okay, so they have a NOTAM up through June 30th, and this is for all types of civil aircraft at an altitude from zero to 19,800 meters. Okay, so very concerning. And I want to remind you guys that the Belarusian military has deployed an entire mechanized brigade to within 10 miles of the Lithuanian border. And that brigade has been put on a wartime status. And they've also recruited like 3,000 conscripts to join this brigade. Okay, so this is a sign that Belarus is preparing to invade Lithuania. Okay, and they may not go too far, but it's enough to cause headaches and chaos and panic in the West, which is just what Putin needs. So this way, NATO is focusing on something else for a little bit while Russia makes their big push in Ukraine to try to take Kiev and Odessa. And this brigade that Belarus has moved to the border, the 19th Mechanized Brigade, has 62 T-72 tanks. 219 combat armored vehicles, 78 artillery systems, and 14 air defense systems. Okay, so it's a serious brigade, and it's been put on wartime status. Here we have a picture of the Belarusian brigade training with their BMPs. Okay, this was taken last week, and here we have a picture that was released by the Belarusian government showing this brigade training with their tanks right on the border with Lithuania. Okay, these are T-72s. And I want to update you guys on the situation in Serbia. So the Prime Minister of Kosovo, Albin Kurdi, released this video last night on his Twitter account showing Serbian military just meters away from the border of Kosovo. Okay, and this is coming just a few days after the president of Kosovo said that they're going to invade Kosovo when the time is right. Okay, and when is that time? I think it's going to be when Russia makes their big push in Ukraine and when Belarus goes after Lithuania and Poland. Okay, it's all going to happen at the same time, all right, to cause as much confusion and chaos in the West as possible. And here we have a video showing some Ukrainian soldiers shooting down a Russian cruise missile with a Stinger missile last night. Check this out. This is pretty cool. So you can see the Stinger missile trail and uh, it's heading right for that, that cruise missile. Yes! 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 So the Ukrainians are pretty crafty, guys. Okay, the Ukrainians are, are very crafty. They're very adaptable. And an aircraft possibly flying in restricted airspace caused NORAD to send a fighter jet over Phoenix to investigate on Wednesday morning. According to the U.S. Air Force, radar picked up an aircraft that wasn't communicating with air traffic control Inside the no-fly zone over Phoenix due to President Biden's visit, NORAD sent an F-15 to investigate around 7.30 a.m. The pilot flew at about 7,000 feet and some people on the ground may have seen the fighter jet. Military officials didn't say what the aircraft was or what happened after the F-15 was deployed. So that is very concerning. Okay, some kind of aircraft flew into no-fly zone. <clears throat> so some kind of plane flew over Phoenix while Biden was there, okay, ignoring a no-fly zone, and there was no communication. So very interesting. And there was another record number of Chinese military planes and naval vessels operating, a, operating around Taiwan yesterday. 36 Chinese military aircraft and six Chinese military naval vessels were detected around Taiwan. 
And this is a record for 2024. That's the most in 2024 in a single day so far. But that's the latest breaking news that I have, guys. I will be back later on tonight with more breaking news. I'm not sure if I'll go live or not, but get prepared. Things are really getting crazy. And if anything crazy does happen with the dam or in Ukraine or when this big offensive by Russia kicks off or when Belarus attacks Lithuania and Poland, I will be going live 24-7 to cover that situation, okay? So make sure you're subscribed. So until later on tonight, take care, God bless, and don't forget the three Ps, prepare, practice, and persevere. Guys, the world is getting crazier by the day. We're on the verge of World War III. The U.S. is drowning in trillions of dollars in debt. Inflation is at an all-time high, and there's no end in sight. So you need to prepare your finances for the future with precious metals. Precious metals are a great way to protect your hard-earned savings and retirement against inflation and the uncertainty of the stock market. Also, precious metals are good to have for the purposes of preparedness to be able to barter with people for essential supplies if the grid goes down. Every prepper should have at least a small amount of silver coins. The company I trust for my precious metals is Midas Gold Group. Text NY Prepper to 232425 for free information on precious metals. Midas Gold Group is 100% veteran owned and supports veterans through the Wounded Warrior Project. Midas Gold Group will work with you to convert part of your retirement savings into gold or to set up a gold IRA. And unlike many precious metals dealers, Midas Gold Group offers precious metals in small denominations, which is great for preparedness, so you have something tangible to use for bartering when the grid goes down. Precious metals have continuously risen in price over the past 100 years and are considered a safe investment, so text NY Prepper to 232-425 for free information and to get started today.